In today's video, let's talk a little bit more about the health benefits of hot tub therapy and sauna therapy for people with cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. And we'll kind of introduce the video as just overall thermal stress strategies, especially for people with metabolic health issues. Now, as you know, about 83% of American adults have some degree of poor metabolic health. That is to say only 17% of US people living in the United States and presumably in other westernized countries have optimal metabolic health. So this concept appeals to a lot of people. Now, I want to just share with you on a paper going back to 1999, my friends, okay, found that hot tub therapy is significantly helpful for people with type 2 diabetes. Now, We've conducted many videos about sauna therapy, but people don't recognize that just going in the hot tub, okay, has health benefits. It's above and beyond just getting hot and feeling relaxed and so forth, the increased blood flow. Because when you get hot on purpose, what you do is you move blood uh, around. So we'll just type in blood flow. A lot of folks with hypertension, with elevated blood pressure, with subclinical cardiovascular disease or coronary artery disease, and diabetes and overall poor metabolic health have challenges with blood flow because of the hypertension, because of the diabetes complications, there's not as much blood going down to the legs, there could be challenges within the skeletal muscle, especially for people who don't exercise. Like if you don't regularly exercise or walk, you must go either in the hot tub or a sauna. So I'll put sauna here, um, whether it's IR or a classic finished sauna, uh, getting hot in the sauna is helpful because it is improving blood flow. What it's also doing is, in, is it, it's inducing relaxation. We know there's different types of diabetes and different ways that people can have poor metabolic health. We have sleep issues, we have stress issues, we have environmental toxins, you know, people that have occupations that are associated with increased exposure to heavy you know, persistent organic pollutants or heavy metals, uh, that can compromise blood flow and, and cardiovascular function. So when you get hot, you're redistributing some of that, and when you sweat in the sauna, whether it's infrared or, or a classic finish sauna, you can excrete these heavy metals. Really important stuff, my friends. And again, this study, back going back to 1999, there was another study and I'll, I'll hi highlight it here. I think the title is really apropos to this conversation. Healthy excursions outside the thermal comfort zone. So a lot of us are in these thermal neutral conditions, right? We have a heater in the house. We have air conditioning in the car, air conditioning in the house. So we're always hovering around room temperature, like 365. Now, the challenge associated with that, and there was a paper going back to 2010 and it was a journal of obesity within nature. So nature has different subjournals, And it, it showed that, that people that live in thermal neutral conditions, there's a higher correlation with obesity because they're not stressing the brown fat by getting cold on purpose and they're not getting excessively hot because they have the AC. And so it turns out that that can actually compromise sort of the tone of the heat shock proteins on the hot side and then on the cold side, the brown fat. So the point is, my friends, is in this 21st century Kush lifestyle, we need to make and be intentional about getting cold on purpose and hot on purpose. This is where cold plunges come in. This is where ice baths and ice barrels come in. So I do just want to let you all know about a tool that you can utilize to get cold on purpose. It's called the ice barrel. It's a, an amazing tool. We have it in our backyard. I've shared with you videos on that. So this is a great way for you to make getting cold on purpose practical because look, you can go to you know the tractor supply store and get a, a, get a, a tank. You're gonna use it probably five or six times. It's gonna get really yucky. You're not gonna have a cover on it. You're gonna get pine needles in there. There's gonna be worms growing in there and, and stuff and your, your wife's not definitely not gonna go in there, my friend. So this is where the ice barrel comes in because it's really convenient to get in. It has a nice cover built into it and the plastic is really thick. It's made right here in the USA and the plastic is actually made from recycled plastic. So people are throwing away supplement bottles and, and food containers and so forth. It is super thick and super sturdy. So you can use the coupon code HIH to save over at icebarrel.com. I'll put links below. We've used it a lot. It's great, it's super convenient to get in and out of, and you're going to actually use it. So the best way to you know, induce thermal stress is by doing it habitually, regularly. Like I said, I have no, nothing wrong with going to the tractor supply store and getting the galvanized stock tank. The challenge is that gets dirty, and trust me, once, if you've done it before, you're not gonna make it a habit. I've tried this uh, and that's why I like these new tools that are coming on the market. So check out the links below. So 
What we wanna do, my friends, is get cold on purpose and hot on purpose. So if you have high blood pressure, if you've been told that you have a family risk factor for heart disease, uh, I would be intentional about investing in a sauna and also looking at um, some sort of uh, ice bath or a cold therapy. Now, a lot of people, oh my gosh, that's terrible, Mike, but we're just gonna leave it like that. So getting cold on purpose. Now, I've said this a million times on these videos, but I just wanna say it again, okay? So when you get hot, whether you go in the infrared sauna, where you go in a classic finished sauna, or go in the hot tub, you are moving blood away from the core to the periphery. Then when you get cold on purpose, you are returning that blood, okay? That's essentially what you're doing with exercise. When you're moving your muscles, your, exercise, your, your exercising muscle pushes blood around, okay? So this is like exercising without having to exercise. Now, this doesn't sort of circumvent the need to exercise. This is an adjunctive therapy to prevent the number one cause of death in this country, which is heart disease, okay? So you wanna get cold on purpose, get hot in, on purpose, because you're moving blood around, you're exercising that endothelial tissue. So thermal stress is a validated way to support metabolic health because it moves blood around, in addition to other things, heat shock proteins and so forth, that can improve insulin sensitivity, okay? So that's really important at the site of the skeletal muscle. As I was mentioning here, healthy excursions outside the com thermal comfort zone, they say, and I'll, I'll just highlight this on the screen, 10 days of intermittent mild cold exposure in type two diabetes patients, uh, increased insulin sensitivity and thereby glucose handling by more than 40%, my friends. This is amazing with minimal downside. You know, there are drugs that can improve glucose handling by 40%. Uh, I can think of SGL2 inhibitors. Uh, there's all sorts of compounds that have side effects, right? You can get you know, urinary tract infections. There's GLP-1 agonists. There's all these things that you can do, but this is sustainable, my friends. This is something that doesn't have a lot of side effects that you can do on your deck in your backyard. You can bring friends over. You can have an ice bath party. You can have a sauna party. You can do so much here. And, and doing these things before you go to bed helps improve sleep. I think you know, sleep disruption, circadian disruption is a huge factor uh, contributing to poor metabolic health. And so we really wanna focus on that, my friends. So again, these videos might sound a little bit repetitive about moving blood around and so forth, but I just wanna drill this down because I have a lot of friends who are on you know, antihypertensive agents, they're on diuretics, they're on ACE2 inhibitors, beta blockers, and I ask them, has your cardiologist or your primary care doctor ever mentioned getting a hot tub or, or investing in a sauna? They say no. No, I haven't heard about that. Why would, why would I wanna go in a sauna, Mike? Because it increases my heart rate, that's bad. No, my friends you're improving cardiovascular health by way of this thermal excursion or this thermal stress, okay? So remember, just when in doubt, if you get the opportunity to go in a hot tub or go into a sauna or get cold on purpose, take advantage of that, my friends. Uh, try to do this with your pals. You know, now it's you know, springs, we have glaciers are melting. Uh, there's lakes that are still a little bit frozen over, but you can go in, there's rivers. Do this in a safe manner. It's a lot of fun to do. And also you can invest in something in your own backyard. And uh, it's, it's just a great habit to get into. Um, now, when it comes to timing, remember from a circadian rhythm standpoint, your body is naturally colder in the morning and gets hotter throughout the day. So from a circadian rhythm standpoint to optimize your sleep and your biologic rhythms, you can do ice, ice barrels or um, you know, cold immersions in the morning and you can get hot on purpose in the afternoon or in the evening. So. Hopefully that helps. And as always, my friends, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Thank you as always for subscribing and leave me a comment below if you decide to uh, start investing in an infrared sauna or an ice barrel or something like that because it is a really cool tool that you can utilize to support metabolic health. All right, we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.